Amen. Good evening once again. And thank you, Pastor, for the privilege and honor to speak and share my burden in the ministry to you this evening. And it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I want to share my testimony, my burden to do in the Philippines, and also a video presentation to you this evening. And I'll start it with my testimony. I am Brother Rick Jaira Esmeña, a missionary to the Philippines. I grew up in a Christian home where my father preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ and also pastor a church in the Philippines. And I saw the struggle and hardship of being in the ministry. I saw how my parents um, sacrificed and persecuted by their own parents. And because of that, at a very young age, I didn't understand all of those things, why they sacrifice a lot, why they are being persecuted by their own family. And because of that, at a very young age, I hated the ministry. And I don't have any desire of being in the ministry before. But um, thank God that God saved me when I was 12 years old when my math teacher got sick in a Christian school. And a pastor missionary took her place to teach us for the whole week. And on the last day of his teaching, he didn't um, talk about mathematics, numbers, subtraction, addition. He talked about Jesus Christ. And on that day, September 1st, of 2012, I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. And after that, as we all know, that the devil um, still wants you to destroy you. And after that, I, um, I, I've been exposed to the world in which all most of my friends are drinking and smoking. And yes, I've been exposed to those things. But God delivered me there. God took me out of there when my father asked me to attend a Bible college for just one year. And without, uh, without any desire, without, without any um, desire in the ministry, I don't want to go to the Bible college. But to make the long story short, um, I granted my father wishes for me. I attend to a Bible college in the Philippines and he gave me a deal. If I survive for just one year, I could change my course or I can shift to another course, whatever course I want. So I granted my father wishes for me that day and attend there for a, a, a year. And after that, in that Bible college, I saw the joy serving the Lord in that Bible college. Even though it is hard, even though it's sacrificial, and I realized also that I am so blessed to be raised up in a Christian home. Where my father keeps on teaching us, guiding <coughs> us to fear God in our life. And little by little, God changes my my goals and desire in life. After two years of studying there in the Bible College, God gave me a privilege to be here in your to be here in your country to further my studies. And I've been here studying for four years now, and I'm ready and I'm excited to go back home by the end of this year, this this December. I was planning to go back home and start there a ministry. And I was thankful to God to be here, to be trained and equipped. And God um, gave me a burden to be a missionary, to go to my home country, reach more people for his own glory, yes. and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost people. And now I just want to show you a video presentation that shows um, our ministry my father's ministry in the Philippines and also um, the place that I've been praying for um, to go to and reach people in that area.
Proclaiming the good news. 
641 islands and it is divided into three main islands and we call them Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao and um, Philippines has more than or around 170 dialects and 60 to 80 percent of the population of the Philippines are Catholic and um, when I go back home my plan is to um, do soul winning to make disciples and also train the nationals that we can um, send them also to do the same thing in different areas of the Philippines and also in different countries also and I have this vision to plant churches and I'm, I'm currently um, praying for a place in the Philippines called Kalashaw Pangasinan it is located in the northern part of the Philippines called Luzon and Akalashaw Pangasinan has 24 villages or 24 barangays what we call it and I'm praying that God um, would send people to uh, help me to start there a Bible believing church and I'm also praying for God to send people also to help me with the need of that ministry by true prayers and true support and right now I'm praying for two thousand dollars monthly support and currently right now I have two hundred ten dollars that is coming in my account in the office of Marietta and I'm still praying that God would send people um, with the same burden that I have to reach more souls in the place in the Philippines and helping out with the needs in the ministry of Kalashaw Pangasinan. And what burdens my heart to go to this place of Kalashaw Pangasinan is that I have a conversation with my dad um, in the past few months that he shared to me that um, there are two two Baptist churches in the area. I tried to visit them and I tried to um, help uh, get some help to start another Bible believing church in the area and when he visited that he said to me that I assume that they are not having churches anymore I, I assume that they don't have church or church services or church program in that area so that burdens my heart to go there that they are blinded by the false doctrines false belief in that area and no one there to 
proclaim the truth or the gospel of Jesus Christ in that area. And so please, I still have uh, more than 10 months before I go back home and start their ministry. And please do pray for me as I travel United States to gather support and money to start their Bible believing church. And now I just want to become a blessing to you this morning. And if you have your Bible, please find your place in the book of Ephesians. And if you find your place in the book of Ephesians, I invite you to stand up with me. We'll read Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 6. And I'm just going to read it to you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 6. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace we are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I just want to talk about this evening on the phrase, on the verse, verse 4, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love. I want to talk about the greatest love or God's greatest love to us. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this wonderful evening that you've given me. Thank you for your people that is here um, willing to um, learn more about you later willing to learn more about your word, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that I may in your name, Lord, may your name be glorified and give us knowledge and wisdom to study your word this evening, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may now all be seated. And before we move on, before we go to our um, um, message this evening, I just want to give you a small background or a brief background about this book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians was written by Apostle Paul. He was writing the book of Ephesians in the prison, prison, prison cell of Rome. He wrote the Ephesians, the book of Ephesians for the saints, or we call them in our term today is believer of Jesus Christ in Ephesus. And the purpose of this writing to Ephesians is to settle them or to establish the Ephesians believers in their, into the truth. And Apostle Paul wants them to be grounded into the truth. Because we all know that in their past lives, Ephesians church or Ephesians believers became idolaters. They have these gods and goddesses. God of fertility and a lot of more gods and goddesses in their past life. So Apostle Paul wrote this book of Ephesians for them to grow and also for them to be matured in their Christian life. And in this passage, Apostle Paul is talking about the God who is rich in mercy. And I want to give you um, a little a knowledge about mercy. Mercy and grace are closely related to each other. It is impossible for the two of this um, aspect or two of this fact that it is impossible to separate them pertaining to salvation. And I just want to give you a simple meaning or simple, <coughs> and I, I know that some of us already know this, Meaning that grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. While mercy is giving us not what we deserve. The mercy of God has to do with the kindness and compassion to us as a sinful being. While the uh, grace of God has to do with the kindness and compassion. But also carries the idea of God's bestowing us gift to humankind. Amen. So God's grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Yeah. While mercy is man's eternal righteousness, Christ will. So my question to you this evening is, what is God's mercy and grace? God's grace is when 
when he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross of Calvary and buried and rose up on the third day. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And I want to share a quotation that I have read while studying this um, um, this um, study. And I, 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 I read that in that quotation that too many people believe and sometimes teach that love is a feeling or emotion. And yes, it is a feeling and emotion. It is um, um, feeling and emotion are involved in love. But the greatest part of love is action-oriented. Love is a verb. Yeah. It is what you do. Yeah. It is more than a noun or it is more than what we feel to one another. Yeah. And many relationships even among Christians failed because they value the um, the emotion over action. They value what they feel or what they, they, they feel to one another more than they value the action that someone gives to them. And typically, we grow to love someone over time and this love for one another grows because what we see them do for us and for the others. And the bottom line of this quotation that I have read is that love is what person chooses to do. It is more than a person chooses to feel. And the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. And He does love us. He loved us so much. Amen. And that love requires action. The ultimate sacrifice of His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the ultimate love in action. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we don't deserve anything from God. We don't deserve, we don't deserve His love. We don't deserve a Savior. We don't yeah. deserve His righteousness yeah. because of our sins. Oh, yeah. Amen. But God loved us so much. That he gave us what we don't deserve. Yeah. He gave us his forgiveness. He gave us his righteousness. He gave us eternal life. Yeah. And the very best part of this is that he gave us a savior. And he gave us his only begotten son. Yeah. And that is God's amazing grace toward us. Even though we deserve that and eternal punishment in hell. God did not give that punishment to us for our sins. Amen. Instead, God gave us mercy and gave us Jesus Christ to deliver us from all our sins. Amen. Amen. And from all our unrighteousness, iniquity. Amen. And that is the greatest love of God. It contains the mercy and grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 says, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. God is love. Amen? Amen. And also God is a holy God. Holy God. God hates sins. Yes, yeah. And the fact Amen. that we are all sinners, Amen. he hates sins. Yeah. So because of our sins, we cannot reconcile to a holy God. Wow. We cannot save ourselves from eternal fire of hell, we cannot go to heaven, and we need the righteousness of a holy person, of a holy God, we need the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ to save us from all our unrighteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 says, For he hath made him, made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. And the cause of that imputation of God's righteousness is the death of our Lord Jesus Christ and the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the uh, greatest love of our God. It contains mercy and grace. God of compassion to us and gave us a gift and that is eternal life 
with the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross of Calvary. So when God saved us, we now belong to our church, amen, which is the body of Christ. So Jesus Christ is the head of our church, of the head of the church, and we are all um, believer of Jesus Christ is the body of Jesus Christ. So we are united with Christ, and that is just because of the mercy and grace of God toward us. That is just because of the love, the greatest love of God toward us. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twelve says, "For us the one, for us the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, be many are one body. So also." is Christ. Amen. So we are united with Christ. He is the head of the church and we are of his family. Not because of what we did, but because of the mercy and grace of God. And I share all of that to you this evening because I want to share to you this morning three similar things on what did the greatest love of God did to us. And also did to his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Number one, first thing, he will resurrect us as he resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jesus came into this world to die for our sin. He bore our sin on the cross of Calvary and died for our sin. And God made him, made him alive again. He was buried and rose again to prove that. He is alive, that He is God, that He is all-powerful, and he is, that He is able to save us from all our sins. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. The God who is rich in mercy and grace hath quickened us together. We can simply means um, he made us alive. And in the first three verses of this chapter, uh, Apostle Paul described the human undesirable or wretched condition of a humankind. Amen. In verse 2 says, Where in time past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of this obedience. So before salvation, we are walking into this world according to Satan. Because in this um, verse, Apostle Paul also describes Satan as the prince of prince of the power of the air. So before salvation, we are dead in sins. Amen. Romans 5 verse 12 says, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and that by sin so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And when God, when God made Adam and Eve, He made a perfect being. And, and Genesis um, said that it was very good. Amen. And God didn't create sins. But when when Adam eat the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, Adam willfully sinned to God and he chooses to sin. And that sin passed upon all men together with the death of men. Amen. We are doomed in eternity without, without God, without life, and without God made us alive. Amen. With that God made us alive. And thank God who is rich in mercy, He made us alive. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I really want this illustration or example of our preacher, Preacher Guy. And he said to us, he shared to us that, you know that the bee has only one sting. He can only sting one animal or one humankind. 
So that Jesus Christ took that one sting, and that that sting is that death or sin, amen. And so that we could not experience um death to us, amen. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. The sting of death is sin. So Jesus took that sting for us, and He became sin for us. Yeah. Right. Not only that He will resurrect us, or He will made us alive. Secondly, He will raise us as He raised us, as He raised Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, He was buried in the tomb, and God made Him alive again, and He was ascended to heaven. Amen. Je Jesus Christ didn't just stay in the tomb, but He ascended, ascended to heaven. To prove that he is alive, that he is God, that he is co-equal with God. Yes. And the same thing to us, God will also raise us up all believer or believer of Jesus Christ. Wow. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. The God who is rich in mercy hath raised us up together. Amen. Amen. When God saved us, He didn't just made us alive, but also He lead, He 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 will ascend us, He will um, raise us up, all the believer. Amen. And this is also our hope. And hope is a is a feeling or expectation and desire of a certain thing to happen in the near future. Amen. And I just want to. Um, Share to you this evening that I've been here for more than three years and with uh, more than four years now. And with that, within that four years, I feel discouraged and lonely. I feel loneliness and homesickness. And sometimes I just woke up in the middle of the night crying because I miss his home. I miss his, my family. I miss my brother, my parents, my sisters. And I know that we all have burdens to carry, and sometimes this burden causes us pain, discouragement. <laughs> Amen. But what encouraged me these days is that I'll be with my family someday. Amen. Amen. And that, that someday God will raise us up together with our Savior. <laughs> Amen. If 1 Corinthians says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, yes. the, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we will all meet the Lord, our Lord in the heaven. Yes. Amen. Yes. That someday God will raise us up together with our Lord and Savior. There will be no more pain, no more discouragement. No more loneliness, no more sadness, <coughs> no more heartaches, no more painkillers, no more vaccines, no more COVID, no yeah. more walking sticks, no more, no more wheelchair. Amen. And as the song says, there will be no sorrows there, yeah. no more burdens to bear, Amen. no more sickness, no more pain. No more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. 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 Not only that He will re resurrect us and raise us, but last thing is He will exalt us as He exalted Jesus Christ. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. 
Jesus Christ came into this world. He humbled himself. He became man for us. He became a, a sin for us. And then we all know that um, a servant do is to obey his master. And we can also see in this verse that Jesus Christ became obedient even the death of the cross. And that what uh, really servants do is to obey his master, to obey God, to be, uh, to be put on the cross of Calvary, to, to die for us on the cross of Calvary. And I just want to um, clarify this to you that I heard this also to a preacher and he said that Jesus Christ is already exalted with or without us. He is already with God. He is already he, he is co equal with God. Oh yes. Amen. He is powerful as God. Amen. In oh, Philippians yes. chapter 2, verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. And Philippians talking uh, talking about here is Jesus Christ and given him a name which is above every name, Amen. that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, Amen. of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Amen. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. As the body of Jesus Christ, we will be also exalted. Because of our Lord and Savior. Because of God's greatest <coughs> love toward us. The God who is rich in mercy and grace made us sit together in heaven. Amen. 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 And I just want to close with this thought this evening. That, G that God resurrect Jesus Christ. <coughs> that God ascend Jesus Christ. And that God exalted Jesus Christ. And as the body of Jesus Christ, God loved us so much that He let us share those things to us. The resurrection, the ascension, and also the exaltation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't deserve those things, but by His mercy and grace, He made us alive. He raised us and exalted us. With Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that is what the greatest love did to us. He looked at as a body of Jesus Christ. Not a sinful being. But, but he loved us unconditionally. And for those. Um, um, and for our visitor this evening. For those who have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. As their personal savior. God love us. God love you so much that He let us um, experience the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is not too late for us to accept the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. this evening. And I just want to also thank you this evening, church, for listening. And thank you for your heart for the missions. And also, Pastor, thank you for the privilege to share and share the word of God to you. Thank you. Have you ever thought about simply like every time I read a of scripture like this, you ever think a nice scripture like this read, you said the God who is rich. I think about the inexhaustible riches of God. And it says here that he's rich in mercy. And I love, I love this. I've heard this for a long, long time. As brother said there a few minutes ago, what mercy is is us not getting what we do deserve. Amen. Oh, what a rich God we have. Amen. That he spared us from what we rightly yeah. deserve. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad for his grace on the other side. He's right. You, you don't have one of those without the other. That grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Amen. That's that's the hope of, of, of salvation. It's not a hope like men think of. It's a sure hope. Amen. I mean, I, I, I'll say it this way. I don't hope that I'm saved. I know that I'm saved. 
I don't hope I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. All because God's rich. And because he's rich in mercy, he's also rich in grace. I just wonder if you thought about that in the last school. As he was, as he was a preacher to read that scripture, I just thought about it. the inexhaustible riches of God. How, how, how we are the benefactors of his riches. My, 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 where would we be had it not been for the love of God? I thank the Lord for that message. I appreciate you, Brother Reed. Appreciate his heart for the work that you see some of the stuff that's going on. I appreciate these young men. I will say this to the young folk that are here tonight. I just thought about we've got a we've got a good bunch of young folk here in this church. And I thought about, you know, God calling folks to go into foreign lands. Of course this rich home back where where he's from and go back there to the place and preach the gospel of God. We have no idea what God's going to do with these young folk. But I do know this, God has a plan for y'all's life. And God wants to use you. And thought about that scripture over the book of Ecclesiastes where he said, Remember now, thy creator, the days of thy youth, while the evil days, thy, uh, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, and thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in me. I want to encourage our young folk, even middle aged folk, remember the riches of God now. Remember the riches of God now. And let that motivate you to do more for the Savior than you have. You don't tell me. I've got, I've got a lot to be thankful for. God's been so good to me. How can I do less than my best? I want to encourage you tonight. If that message has spoke to you, maybe you had not thought about it. Just how good it is. All those things that the Lord has promised you through what His Son did. How he's going to raise you up. How he's going to lift you up and exhort you. May us sit together in heavenly places. We're going to enjoy what that is tonight. Maybe you, maybe you just want to thank God for that tonight. Maybe you just ain't really just praise him for that delight. Think about it. Just how good it is to be saved. Maybe tonight, if you're about to get in this altar, just say thank you, Lord, for reaching down and saving a wretch like me. Giving me hope beyond this, beyond this life. I want you to mind the Lord tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and he, and he gave the invitation to the lost. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know that you're saved. These things are promised to you through his word and what he's preached on. And you can have that same hope if you trust in Jesus tonight. And I would encourage you to do so if you've never done that. Just mind the Lord. Let's stand and let's sing. That's what's real, man.